and community center with a new cultural and community center being built on the site of the original sanctuary. Laba Berlin, a laboratory for Jewish culture, is a foundation stone of this project. Laba was first launched in 2007 at the 14th Street Y in New York's East Village. The fellowship uses classic Jewish texts to inspire the creation of art, dialogue, and study. Laba now has hubs in a few cities around the world, including our home here in Berlin. In March 2021, Laba Berlin posted a call for applications for its fellowship program, focusing on this year's uh, theme of chosen. This Jewish artistic cultural exploration was framed as groundbreaking and the first of its kind. However, little did the organizers know that they were following in the footsteps of earlier Jewish artistic revolutionaries who had built an artistic collective, collective only a couple of decades earlier. November 9th, 1989 marked the fall of the Berlin Wall. A moment when the world was celebrating unification, there were a lot of groups trying to understand what this change meant for them. Particularly in marginalized communities, there was a lot of fear and turmoil as they navigated their place in this newly unified Germany. And that is just what this group of Jewish artists embarked on. Berlin is a world renowned, Berlin is world renowned for its innovative contemporary art scene as well as its monumental Jewish history. And this period after the fall of the Berlin Wall proved to be a pivotal moment in the continued reemergence of Jewish art of the Jewish art scene exemplified by the artist collective Meshulash and the journal Golem. As a brief, brief overview of this timeline, Meshulash was formed in 1992. It held its largest exhibitions in 1997 and 98. And the final edition of Golem was published in 2007. Today's event is an attempt to add to the historical documentation on social media of Meshulash's revolutionary work. Today, we have four women who are part of this creating, working, and living during this unique historical moment. Before we get started, I just wanna ask from silence from everyone in the audience. We also uh, will be keeping all of your microphones muted on our end, uh, but we wanted to encourage everyone to please put any questions you have in the chat and we will collect them for our Q&A at the end. Um, and I also wanted to let everybody know for your information that the event is being streamed live on Facebook, where it can also be seen at a later time. And so now to introduce our first speaker, uh, Hazan Yalda Rebling. Uh, Hazan Rebling was born in Amsterdam and grew up in East Berlin. Her mother was a Shoah survivor and internationally renowned Yiddish singer. Yalda was an actress and a cantor specializing in Jewish music from the early Middle Ages through modern time. Yalda founded the Yiddish festival in Berlin, Tagadir Yiddish Kultur, um, from 1987 to 1997, and was co-founder of the Yiddish's Liederhater, please apologies for my uh, pronunciation, um, in the Hakkasher Hof Theater in Berlin from 1993 to 2008. Uh, she has been an active member of the first egalitarian synagogue in Berlin, or Hanimberger Strasse, since 1998, uh, as well as an active member of Beth Deborah. So please take it away, Yalda. No, first I have... No, I'm unmuted. So hello, everybody. And uh, I'm uh, very happy to sit here in this circle and to be able to share with the younger generation the very exciting time we lived through. First of all, I want to tell you that there always has been active Jewish culture in Berlin. Even during the time, the darkest days of the Shoah, there were always Jews actively in an artistic way. When uh, Berlin was divided, we had an active Jewish artistical scene in East Berlin, but we had it also in West Berlin. So I grew up in East Berlin in a Jewish intellectual environment. And so it was uh, pretty clear that I founded in 1987 a Yiddish festival, the first Yiddish festival in Berlin. It became later a UNESCO project and an international Yiddish festival where Yiddishists from the East and the West were meeting each other. 
1989, I was surely active in the movement for freedom, and it was the 9th of October 1989, the day of the change. So not the fall of the wall, but the 9th of October, that we, with our longing for freedom, were successful. And when then the wall came down, it was for us Jews a scary situation. Suddenly, the Germans had their big Deutsches Reich back, and many Jews left Germany because they were afraid. And there was a reason that they were afraid. Across my apartment in the Prenzlauer Berg, people were shouting, Deutschland, the Deutschen, on their way from East Berlin to West Berlin, because I live not far away from the Bornholmer Straße, the first gate what was opened to West Berlin. And in these the years, in the beginning of the 1990s, we had a wave of strong right wing violence against strangers, in, uh, um, in Mölln, in Solingen, but also in Hoyerswerda and Rostock, Lichtenhagen. And in the summer 1992, there was a huge pogrom in Rostock, Lichtenhagen. And a few weeks later, in October 1992, the German government wanted to get rid of uh, some uh, citizens from Romania who were Sinti and Roma. And a group of French uh, people, Serge Glasfeld and his wife, um, Beate Glasfeld, went with a bus with 46 activists, uh, all children of uh, Shoah survivors and resistance fighters, to Rostock to protest against the deportation of the Sinti and Roma people. And uh, they were arrested. Five people, five Jews, went into jail in Rostock Lichtenhagen. And uh, they, uh, there was a huge movement, demonstrations in Paris to get the Jews out of jail in Rostock Lichtenhagen. And in this moment, in those days, I was um, invited for an, uh, um, an event, commemoration for a pogrom against Jews in 90, uh, in, in 1492, so 500th anniversary, and everybody was the, 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 the Catholic bishop and the Protestant bishop, and everybody was talking about the dead Jews of 500 years ago. And I was the only one, uh, I was invited to, to sing in between all the speeches, and I stood up and said, wait a minute, we are talking here about the dead Jews of 500 years ago, but what is going on? Not far away, only a half hour away uh, from this place in Rostock. And finally, the late uh, Rabbi Brandt um, took in his speech a connection to what is happening right now in Germany, a very strong right-wing wave. So what was the situation? Um, there was these French Jews did something we German Jews should have been done. And this is, and Britta can later talk more about it, Gabriel Heimler was sitting at the radio and, 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 and uh, following this entire story in the French radio. And we did do anything. So this was the, the, the birth uh, Hang of uh, Meshulash, let us say in this way. Um, when the Allied forces left Germany and many Jews came back uh, to Berlin, we understood two things. First of all, the German democracy is strong enough that we can feel safe in this country. And the second thing is, we as Jews of Shoah survivors lived always with the idea, one day we will go to leave. We will not stay in Germany. We will go to America, Israel, I don't know where in the world, but we will not stay. And suddenly we understood, also through uh, my teenage children, uh, they don't want to leave, we will stay. And so we had to reinvent our Judaism in a new dimension. 
and these 1990s <laughs> were full of creativity. The other point is that Berlin was, especially East Berlin, was empty. So we were living on a very low price uh, to think about how much your rent costs or what bread and milk is costing. That was no topic for us. And there were huge spaces empty. So for artists, a fantastic situation. If you have an idea, you go out, you look for a beautiful empty space and you go to ask the landlord, can we rent a space for two months and we paid water and electricity and that was it. The landlord was happy that something happened in this empty building. And so people were looking at this building. That was the one point. So we had a lot of space and many, many Jews from all over the world came to Berlin, entered Berlin, also Israelis, um, to start a new chapter in our, our history, in our Jewish history in Germany. So we had a huge discussion how to, uh, how to deal with commemorations because we understood all kinds of commemorations what are going on. Are the Germans commemorating the dead Jews? But it was not our story. We did not tell them how we commemorate. Or we had a discussion about how to commemorate the 27th of, um, um, uh, of January, the liberation of, uh, of, the, 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 uh, of Auschwitz. So I'm a daughter of a mother who came back from Auschwitz. Anna is a daughter of a mother who came back from Auschwitz, our story. And somebody said, we should celebrate. We should have a big party. Am Yisrael Chai. We have to find our own new path, how to Jew. And uh, so this is the moment I want to give along to Britta, if I'm right, because she was in West Berlin, together with Gabriel Heimer, and she can tell the story from the other side. Hey, Alga. Um, I will give a brief introduction for Britta before she gets started here. Um, uh, thank you. Britta Jurg was born in Frankfurt and came to West Berlin in 1988. She founded Aviva. A uh, publishing house in 1997, which publishes books from Jewish women writers in the 1920s and 1930s, among others. Britta co founded Meshlash and was part of the Golem editorial board. Um, so, Britta, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, it was. Um, we, we heard about the beginning of, of Meshlash. It started. Uh, yeah, in 1992, with a group of Jewish and non-Jewish artists and intellectuals, and uh, who lived in Berlin, and uh, after all these um, these incendiaries and and violent racist uh, riots, uh, Yada was talking about, we discussed about what what to do against it, and um, and created wanted to create it, create artistic and political events, also against the new asylum laws in Germany, um, about these contradictions in this, uh, Yada was all already talking about um, in the German politics of memory, and uh, for example, also against uh, the central memorial of the Federal Republic of Germany uh, for the victims of war and tyranny, the, the Neue Wache from 1993. But um, even if everything started as a reaction to this, this violence and this xenophobia, uh, we wanted to show that there is, there is more, there, there is a very diverse um, Jewish life in Berlin and that it's part of the city and that it's the, the city's cultural life. And there were different people um, who were part of, of Meshulash, um, lots of people, um, at a certain time, and I, I can't mention them all, but um, but uh, uh, it's uh, uh, I think it's it's very important to mention two of the the founders and the most important um, one is Michael Freimann, um, who who died in two thousand five, much too early, 
and um, and the other one is uh, Gabriele Heimler, um, and who who doesn't live in Berlin anymore since 2010. And around them were lots lots of different people, and um, yes, I was there also uh, from from the beginning, but. <clears throat> Um, the most, um, I think, uh, very, the most important thing, um, yeah, okay, we wanted to, to show, uh, I said, we wanted to show that, uh, to, to do something, and the, the great exhibition um, we had and we organized was the exhibition DAFKA, but I want to, to tell that in August 1997, there we, we had some, some, events even before, but they were much, much smaller. But uh, in August 1997, we had a one day exhibition in a former synagogue, which is now since 2005, um, a synagogue again at uh, in Berlin at Bundstraße. Yes. And um, where we showed, for example, a golem, <laughs> we had one of the, the artistic part was was a, a, a golem. Um, and this, this was only a one day exhibition, but uh, but I think it was very um, also already very important. And uh, we had lots of lots of people were um, hearing about it. And then uh, in this November, December 1998, we we organized the big exhibition DAFKA in the Ahava in Berlin um, with more than 20 artists. And maybe Yalda, you wanted to to tell just something about this building, yes. about the Ahava building, I think. And now yeah, we get we the see, picture. We see the Wonderful. picture. Yeah, thank so you. This, this building is in the Auguststraße. It is at the back side of the big synagogue, Oranienburger Straße, what everybody knows as the big synagogue in Berlin. And it was uh, in the beginning a Jewish hospital, then it became a Jewish orphanage. And the, the, the sad story of the Ahava is that um, uh, one day when the, the mothers who were working in, in, in the, in, in, at different places wanted to pick up their children and the children were deported uh, to the concentration camps. And a few weeks later, also the mummies were deported. And in GDR times, that was a normal school. And uh, after 1990, the building was empty, just empty. So we had the opportunity in the heart of the Jewish Berlin. So once more, it's the center, the old Berlin center, um, um, big Schul Oranienburger Straße, not far away, uh, the Scheinenviertel, um, in the in the Krausnickstraße, um, the murdered uh, Rabbi Regina Jonas lived. So it is a very Jewish place, and in the heart of Berlin, in the heart of East Berlin, um, and the new synagogue was uh, just opened. Uh, the, the Oranienburger Straße Schule. Um, here we were able, it was a little tricky to get the keys, no, but that's another story. I tell you another time how we got the keys. <laughs> um, and uh, so we could offer every artist a, a room. Every artist got one room to do something with that. So I know that Melissa has a picture of uh, René de Rose artwork. Okay. We are waiting for it. Well, firstly, so a great maybe then But we have to tell you. Yeah, I will. Maybe I can continue or? No, but I only want to tell. It was uh, November. It was cold. It was freezing. We had no heat. And we were afraid that people would not come. But people came and stood for more and then an hour in this very cold building. So um, it, it was an important um, experience for the city of Berlin and also in the Jewish life of Berlin. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, we had, we had, we, there were artists who participated who were already part of Meshulash and we invited um, 
other artists to um, uh, to come and to to participate and uh, and it was really uh, yes it was cold we had some some gas heaters in the entrance uh, but um, yeah only in the entrance uh, and everybody had to I don't know we 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 didn't get any money for it so it was uh, we painted uh, the rooms and everybody did uh, everything um, to 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 show. Uh, something very special. We wanted to show one very special room uh, from uh, René de Rose. Yeah. Um, maybe the yes, picture now. It with the talit. With the talit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there, that you can have a little bit the the feeling how these these rooms were or could be and on on the floor there's um uh, all the floor is uh, filled with coal um Thanks. so that's that's maybe one uh, but something maybe about the title dafka um it means something like in spite of and um it was dafka to show Jewish traditions, but visions too. So it's it was an exhibition not only about the past, but also about the future and about the the richness of of Jewish Jewish life um, today. In um, at the yeah, this is the the cover of um, of the Dafka catalog, and in our editorial to the catalog, we wrote. Uh, we hope to evoke creative unrest um, and which can be also a kind of motto for the Meshulash activities. Um, I would like to say that um, there's also uh, Regina Scher, uh, writer, um, famous uh, writer uh, from Berlin. She wrote a text about the, the, um, uh, the Ahava, um, the building. And um, Esther Discherait, uh, who is also a very famous Jewish writer from Berlin and who is very often invited um, uh, in, uh, is very often in, in the US um, uh, at different um, occasions and university as a guest professor, etc. And she, uh, she wrote a very good text um, which is called August Straße uh, 1416, which is also in, in the catalog. Um, yeah, we, of course, we can't, we can't show uh, all of the, the uh, this, this fantastic rooms. There were also some, um, some rooms um, we created as a, um, uh, as the Meshulash group, for example, with interviews um, we made with um, some uh, Jews from Berlin, and where we asked them about how they feel to uh, how is, about their Jewish identity um, and something like this, and and we presented also these kind of mm. texts, um, but in a very good way, I think, also in this exhibition. <laughs> yeah, and I was uh, pri privileged. I'm not a visual artist. I'm a, I'm actor and singer. And what I did was uh, uh, going with the people from room to room and uh, adding to the the, the artwork some uh, songs and um, midrashic stories stories from the, our uh, Jewish scripture. So to give it another dimension here, we don't have a recording and that's what uh, uh, actor's art is. It is very soon forgotten. <laughs> yeah, this was, this was wonderful. Um, and um, after, yeah, of course we could, we could speak only a, a whole evening only about this Dafka exhibition, but um, but of course, after this Dafka exhibition, it it went on, and uh, uh, so uh, it continued in different ways. So, on one side, uh, the artistic activities were going on, and um, and Anna will talk about this uh, a, little, uh, a little bit later. 
Um, yes, but uh, on the other side, um, also we we created um, a, a European Jewish magazine oh. named Golem, and yeah, Toby shows already the first mm -hmm. uh, the first magazine, um, the first Golem magazine, and the last one, <laughs> and um, oh, and one. both were and both were also combined because. Uh, we always showed pictures from the exhibitions in the magazine. And it was in English, French, and German. And, um, and uh, yeah, about their one numbers about Jewish identity, about family, about circumcision. But all this, I think Toby will continue to, to speak about this. And so I would, uh, uh, I would stop here and, um, yeah, and I think Toby could continue because we were together also in the in the um, editor, or we were were editors together with Micha Freiman um, and others in the in the Golem magazine. Thank you so much, Britta. Um, I will now move on to uh, to introduce uh, Toby Axelrod, who will be speaking next. Um, Toby Ann Axarat is a New York-born journalist uh, for Anglo-Jewish publications. She moved to Berlin in 1997 as a Fulbright journalism scholar and currently works between Berlin and Western Massachusetts. Uh, she is writing a book about non-Jewish Germans confronting the history of the Holocaust in their own families and hometowns. Um, so we're very excited to hear from you next, Toby. Go ahead. Thank you, Melissa, and thank you all of you who've already spoken for bringing back so many memories. We've been talking and planning our um, conversation today. And each time I just, I feel like I go back in time a little bit. Um, my story is very different. I was not growing up or, you know, in Germany, East or West. I was coming from New York to Germany and with entirely different goals in mind. My goal was as a journalist to write about things going on here. Um, in, in the Jewish world. And at a certain point, I started to become inspired to, to get involved myself uh, in, in stuff going on. So the first thing I want to say is that I went to this uh, exhibit, the Dafka exhibit in, in Ahava. It was one of the, it's one of the earliest memories I have of my time in, in Berlin. I remember how cold it was in that place. That's one of the, and I remember get, getting a cup of something warm to drink to keep me, to keep me warm. Um, and I remember going through some of the exhibition, exhibition rooms. I don't remember everything because this is quite a long time ago, but I do remember the golem uh, that was lying on a bed in one of the rooms. And I think that was possible to write a, a wish or prayer and put it in some something in the, in the mouth, mouth, in the mouth, right? In the mouth of the, I mean, it's hilarious. I, I, I just thought this thing was terrific. So here I am in, in Berlin, in former East Berlin, which is still a little bit more raw than the West. Um, and this space, which is definitely raw being used for um, artistic expression. It was fantastic. I was so inspired. And little did I know that a few years later, I would actually get involved with the, the literary part of, of this movement. So um, it happened, uh, I think I, I probably did some translation first of some of their texts. And then one of the members of the magazine um, wasn't a staff, it was all volunteer. Um, asked me to write something for the uh, the edition on family. So I wrote something about my own interesting com combined family of secular and religious and how that worked in my life and how um, what the, the sort of, I, I, I guess you'll have to read it uh, to, to understand, but <laughs> it's actually still online from all of those years ago, um, this story. And uh, I had such a great time writing it. And then I was asked to, to attend some of the editorial meetings. And well, that's how it all started. I, I began to work together with the, the team of, of writers, of editors. We chose themes to work on, and then we would go out and look for writers. Um, and I think I remember coming up 
please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I came up with the idea for the circumcision. Uh, I, my, my, my view as a, as a journalist was always find the thing that is going to be the most sensational, controversial topic you can come up with, and then people will want to read it. So, okay, circumcision. And we would have the most interesting editorial meetings sitting there. The, the people who grew up in Germany, the Jews, the non-Jews, the people who were circumcised, who were not circumcised, uh, people who had attended the circumcisions of their uh, grandchildren. Um, we found a female Mohel to, we wrote, we did an interview of a female, so Mohelet. Um, on and on, the, 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 the magazine contains so many different aspects of this uh, and the art that went with it. So, you know, Gabrielle contributed art to it and uh, Salayan, Salayan uh, also, I mean, several people contributed. I did, I did my first artistic contribution too. Um, and it was just a very exciting time. It was also stressful because we would have long discussions. These meetings were tremendously long sometimes. Um, but for me, it was also transformational because from an outsider who was writing about Jewish life in Germany for an American audience, I suddenly became part of something. And this, this was a transformation for me that I, I hadn't expected, I hadn't planned on. Um, and so I, I'm very grateful that I was able to be part of this. Um, okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can add to it. Um, okay, I, I wanted to yes. chime in and ask, could you, um, could you expand more on the uh, circumcision uh, uh, artistic ex thing that you did, or that, you, that was your idea? Oh, the, the, art, the actual artwork that I did? <laughs> um, I like to do collages, so I made a collage of various images and words uh, that, that said something about the idea of, of maleness, of, um, of femaleness, <laughs> of, yeah, phallic symbols and so on and so forth and and jewish writings uh, on these topics so it's it's kind of like a tree trunk a very large tree trunk growing up and then all around it are these words that relate to to this uh this subject so i i sat and cut and pasted these little words and images together um and it was an honor to actually be working on something that was not um not written, but but a work of art with these people who who were also like great and accomplished artists. So I was humbled, and also um, it was it felt great to be able to to do something like that. Um, and then with this, our last issue, this was the one on circumcision. We we had a press conference where um, we all we all got together in the one of the seminar rooms of the new synagogue, which is not new in case you didn't uh, get that message before. It's actually, it was actually from 1866 and then it was renovated. So <clears throat> we had our little press conference and as part of this press conference, we snipped off the corner of the magazine. This is, this is not the one. Um, and then we took that little corner and we buried it under a tree in the park uh, near where we were. So it's Montbijou Park, if anyone knows Berlin. Um, and we did that because we had discovered in the course of our research that in one of the synagogues in Berlin that's still part of which is still standing, um, there's a large tree in the courtyard and that tree apparently was the one where the foreskins were buried, I mean, traditionally. So we decided to carry that through in our, in our little uh, Gollum press, press conference. So there were moments of hilarity, there were moments of um, discussion and arguing, but, but positive argument over issues. Um, and I got to know all these incredible people Again, like Britta said, you know, it's hard to name them all, but really who influenced me and, and made me feel like I was part of something here in, in Germany, in the Jewish world. So that's just, I don't know if that, uh, I think I, I don't want to use up every last second of my allotted 10 minutes, so. No, that was, 
That was I perfect. Um, we are now going to transition. Um, Britta, did you want to say one thing? Yeah, maybe just just one thing um, still that even Golem was uh, also most of the time uh, we didn't uh, we didn't get money for it. And so that's why finally we put all lots and lots of work in it. The distribution was a great problem. Um, and uh, and so it stopped because you could ask why did it stop then? Um, and we didn't really make more. Uh, we think it's very important the numbers were made, but it, there are not so so many of it. But um, uh, but uh, I just wanted to say that it was everything we did it um, without without yeah. funds, without money. I still the have about ten or fifteen of these. So if anybody wants them, just contact me. <laughs> They're definitely worth reading. They're still totally up to date. Um, yeah, the feel free to. And then it is Anna. Anna. I also wanted to share that uh, at least at 2007, 2008, when we uh, ran into the finance crisis, the big finance crisis, the entire situation changed in the city. So suddenly, uh, money took over. It you you couldn't find any more a room where you just made an exhibition, and so it became everything became more complicated, and it was also a time change. What uh, was symbolized with the last editorial of the edition of the the Golem. Thank you, Anna. Um, so now we will move on to our last speaker. I want to put um, one final comment out there. If you have any questions, please feel free. To put them in the chat because um, once we are finished, we will go through them. Um, so please feel free to ask. Um, and so now I will introduce our last speaker for the day. Um, we have Anna Adam. Uh, Anna is an internationally renowned painter, stage designer, illustrator, and object artist. Her satirical exhibition, Fine Cost Adam, uh, is the, in the Jewish Museum of Furt uh, and has been subject to international controversy. Uh, Anna joined Mushalash in 1997 and currently works as an artist in the Berlin countryside. And so Anna was going to speak about um, the artist experience in Meshwash. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm one of the visual artists um, who came a bit later into the group. And for me, it was a big surprise that a group that, like this exists because um, I came to Berlin and I had a huge exhibition in Gropius Bau with portraits on a, on a Jewish woman who didn't survive. And I thought um, if I'm working on Jewish themes, I, uh, it's normal to, have to, to, to spend my focus on Shoah and on the past and on death and on all these terrible things. And for me, it was, uh, I, I didn't know that it's possible to, to, be, to have fun with being a Jew. And then suddenly, <laughs> um, Hartmut Bomhoff from Meshulash called me after this exhibition and said, you know, there's a group of Jewish artists and, um, and maybe you want to join. And I was immediately getting fantasies on all these uh, Jewish artist groups in the 20s and th early 30s and all the political uh, work they did and all the powerful exhibitions they did. And I thought, Wow, what a chance. It was, it, it jumped into my life and it, it changed my life. Because suddenly I, I met all these Jews. You know, when you are growing up as a second generation Jew or how I call myself now as a first Jew after, uh, and you don't grow up in Berlin, um, you feel very lonely very often and you you don't uh, talk too much about your Jewishness because it doesn't have anything to do with your work you think and and then suddenly there is this group of uh, different European Jews and non-Jewish intellectuals and so on and we talk about the specialties of being a Jewish artist. And that was really something. And maybe you, you can show the uh, Meshulash Diaspora Manifesto because um, for me, it was so, so important to suddenly discuss about our uh, Selbstverständnis, self, self. How we see how ourselves. Our, our, yeah, how we see ourselves. Because before we thought, 
you know, a real Jew has to be an Israeli Jew or an American Jew, but never, never, ever an European Jew because it's diaspora. So what does it mean for us to stay and to want to say, Yalda talked about the changes in the after the war came down and suddenly we unpacked our luggage and it, it did something with our art because we had to learn that it's okay to be loud and to be colorful and to do colorful things and to, to open big spaces and not to, to say, okay, it's fine, thank you. I can have my painting here on the wall, thank you. No, big space, big rooms, talking loud, speaking out loud and finding a position as a Jewish artist who stays in Germany, who is allowed to stay in Germany and who will stay in Germany forever and who will help to create the democracy and to protect also Jews in Israel and in America, because uh, when people talk about uh, Israeli uh, Jews, it, it's not also not, not always nice. So we became stronger. We became stronger and stronger. We, we, we stopped to find excuses for staying in Europe. We found out that we are important European Jews that we have to say something and we found new ways to say it and we gave our, ourselves as a group as a strong and loud and colorful group the permission to do so and that was really really new for the 90s it was the special time of the 90s because we decided to unlock our uh, to unpack our luggage to stay and to help to create a peaceful and open and um, and colorful Germany, and this this was one of the motors of all the following exhibitions. And there were many. And there were many. And I, I remember in the first big one, uh, we were a bit afraid if people would be interested in what we are doing, and then we opened the doors and thousands of people came. And they were wondering what Jews are, can do <laughs> because they 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 were they came in and and I think they they thought we will show them everything about the past they they already knew and they don't want to see anymore and then suddenly they met young living Jews <laughs> loud and colorful you see this is one of the floors it was it was I don't know if you see it very good. It's crowded. It was really crowded. And we were proud and shocked on the same time. We figured out how important our work is. And one of the, one of the specialties also was that we said uh, we want to invite uh, well-known artists from, from whole Germany who normally don't talk about their Jewishness and they, we want to help them with their coming out. <laughs> and, and also we want to give uh, non-professional artists and writers and so on a chance to, to work and to show their work. And we also uh, worked in the name of all generations of Jews. I remember many calls of uh, survivors who said and you have to say something about this and you have to say something about that so we were also speaking in their names and also children came and learned uh, learned different parents uh, because before we were jews at home but not outside and suddenly the kids also learned that it's it's okay it's wonderful it's so it changed our artist's view and it changed also the sizes of the paintings. I remember the first paintings were pretty small and then they, they became bigger. And, and I remember the, that some artists said, okay, in the Ahava, one room only for me. Oh, <laughs> what can I do? And then suddenly it spread out. So we all gave to each other the chance to come out as Jewish artists, not only as artists and that was really that was really cool 
Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and a <laughs> lot of discussions, so, so that's the fun for us. Uh, a lot of discussions, what we find now online and in the press, uh, we had already in the 90s. So I remember this one uh, German author writing about uh, desintegriert euch. Yeah, that's what we did in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. You have to say we, what that we, means. We saw, we saw uh, mm -hmm. as a Jew, you learn you have to behave in a way that nobody is uh, looking at you, that you are special. You have to show that you are a normal Berlin kid and you speak the best German, even though it was not the best and so on and so on. And, uh, and, and we did the other way around. We said, no, wait a minute, this is us. And here we are in a bigger group and we are, are strong and we are who we are. And if you don't like us, it's your pro problem. We are who we are. And we had uh, very often very different opinions from the official German opinion about Jews. So we could tell endless stories here. That's another story. Um, but um, it's so funny for me, or perhaps that's how life is, that every generation has to create its own place in the society where it is. So now Laba in Berlin is starting and you have some discussions we had already 20 years ago and it's fine that you <laughs> repeat these discussions, but it is the next generation and we now, above us, what we are, leaning a little bit back and watching this development and think it's fantastic. And it is such a blessing to watch how the next generation is standing on uh, and creating something. Uh, but talking about generations, this was also a, a, a specialty that, um, especially for, for, for the Jewish artists who had so parents who were survivors, we were uh, raised to be quiet people. And we were afraid to go out because our parents were afraid that something bad would happen to us. So step by step, not only we as young Jews had to learn to go out, we had to learn to take our parents with us and to, to, uh, to get rid of this fear. And, and this was really something that, um, that brought out new energy. Suddenly they started to talk and they helped us to, to create the future. And before they talked about their past very often, um, or they didn't talk about anything. And suddenly, because they were inspired by us, they got more powerful and more strong. And they said, okay, we accept that you as young Jews, now we are old, but you as young people, you are no victims, you are creators. And, it's and that's, uh, Anna, that's uh, what Yalda is showing. I just thought you wanted to to show this. Regeneration was one was one title of one exhibition, and maybe we could see some of the photos from uh, from the the exhibitions. And this too. was also in a big former school in Prenzlauer Berg. Prenzlauer Berg was in the nineties the the place to be. Uh, because it was in the former East Berlin and there were many old houses which were empty. And uh, there was also an empty school and, uh, in Prenzlauer Berg and we uh, were able to get in there and get a space to do the regeneration uh, exhibition. Yes. Elisa, do you have some more pictures for us? Talking about art without yes, seeing the art. Eden uh, exhibition <laughs> in the in Oderberger Straße. Yeah, Oderberger Straße swimming, in the swimming pool. Thank you. This was a very and that was a Berlin room. swimming um, swimming hall, but it was closed for many years because yeah, it was just an empty room. And, uh, and today it is reconstructed, but in those days they did not have enough money to reconstruct it. So we had a huge room uh, with a very interesting acoustics. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and the title, maybe the title Eden sucht Eden, Eden is looking for Eden. So it was all about 
Paradise and Eden and mm. yeah, Dreams. It was a very good exhibition. Yeah, this was and Villa this Elizabeth. here is uh, Villa Elizabeth. It is also an old building in the in the heart of of uh, the center of Berlin, East Berlin. And that was a big exhibition in the context of the Jüdische Kulturtage. Um, in Berlin, there are is a Jewish culture festival. It was founded after the Tage der Jüdischen Kultur, after our <laughs> East Berlin festival. And uh, it uh, takes place every year and is uh, getting mm -hmm. bigger and bigger and bigger and famous artists are coming. And here we were in the Villa Elisabeth and it was a festival what suddenly brought in uh, creative Jews from all over the world. So we had the Heap magazine there, uh, something what was shocking for many Berliners that Jews can be so wild. Yeah, <laughs> on, on every exhibition we had uh, uh, a lot of uh, journalists and yeah. TV and radio and yeah. so on, because it was, uh, it was new that Jews were so loud and so colorful, so everybody wanted to see it and show it. And then I remember also the exhibition in the uh, in the uh, Telegrafenamt. So across the street of the Synagogue Oranienburger Straße, there is a huge, huge, huge building uh, from around the 1900 where uh, the, the, all the post information came together and it took them many years till they found an investor to reconstruct this building because all these old tubes where, where they put the letters in then it <laughs> went through the entire city and there pneumatic it system. also what is the English term pneumatic it was pneumatic tubes aha uh -huh. pneumatic yeah. tubes okay and uh, so there we also had a big 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 building huge rooms I remember that there we had also different Israeli artists who came uh, to do uh, very interesting performances. Uh, so it was, uh, it was, yeah, was great <laughs> looking back. Well, we're in our last four minutes. Um, I know that you all have a thousand things to talk about. So if you would like to continue and if anybody would like to stay on after, then we can certainly allow that. But um, for the time being, I will call for an official close. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, we've really enjoyed this wonderful event, uh, exploring fascinating history. If you would like to get more involved with Lava Berlin or the Yudishim Center or uh, Franklin Luther Synagogue, uh, we will include links in the chat here. Um, and additionally, I wanted to let everybody know that our next round of applications for the Lava Fellowship will open next week uh, on April 1st. Um, and so now, Please, once again, feel free if you have any last minute questions in our remaining three minutes, um, please go ahead and, and speak about whatever else you want to. Um, but thank you all so much for coming and for being a part of this wonderful event. While, while people are posting their questions, I just want to say that um, something that Anna said reminded me of what our meetings were like at your home, Britta, for Gollum, where we would sit in, the, we would sit in a room where the walls were covered with paintings by Gabriel, Gabriel Heimler. And I never studied single painting so long as in your home. I feel like I can see these paintings in front of my eyes right now. It was great, to, it was so inspiring. Yeah, and it was inspiring to, to speak about it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for this invitation. <laughs> yeah. I hope we get some questions more. People have some questions. Nope. Uh, <clears throat> I think I see some people starting to type maybe, so okay, maybe. <laughs> um, but uh, I suppose I will also ask, I, this is very German centric and you've, you've talked about some international things. What type of work did you do to connect maybe with other artists or Jewish artists uh, around Europe? Who are you asking? Uh, whoever would like to answer. No, they just came. You, no, so artists are always looking for places where they can make an easy living because mm -hmm. artists very often don't have so, so much money. But and we was... had spaces. We had space. Yes or no? 
Okay. <laughs> because they were also very well-known artists. Uh, we, we saw them in, in museums and in big galleries and so on. And then we, we got in contact to them. We also, there were some artists like um, uh, Dreyfus and, uh, wie heißt der? Uh, ach, now I'm missing the names. Uh, uh, there are now lots of uh, lots of things also uh, written in the chat and uh, yeah of course uh, uh, Ian uh, Ian Levison <laughs> is right yeah. that uh, that there was a lot going on around this it wasn't an island by itself there you're completely right um, but uh, but it was um, still something special I think or it's it's good to remember what it was but you're completely right yeah. So in, in the same time, the, the egalitarian uh, minion in the synagogue Oranienburger Straße started the first e egalitarian shul in, in Berlin. And that was uh, also a, a great story to tell. We had the Hackische Hoftheater where we had uh, Yiddish Lied Theater to speak it out. So there was a lot going on in, in, in this time, yeah. Uh, now I remember one name again. It was uh, Piotr Nathan. Piotr Nathan was one a very well-known artist at that time. He was uh, his art was shown internationally, and um, he he had a very strong uh, gay ident identity in his work. And when we talked to him and asked him if he wants to work with us for an exhibition, he said, yes, I know I'm Jewish, but is it important for my art? And, mm -hmm. and then he, he really, really enjoyed our, our discussions. And after a while he said, yeah, I will do it. Maybe it's not so, maybe it's good for me to, to go out with, my, with this part of my identity also. And then years later, he told me how much his art changed afterwards, because now he felt round, as if a lost arm is coming back. So sometimes we really, yeah, we were uh, hebammen, birth, birth, uh, we gave birth, birth to, givers. <laughs> to some artists. But there are what some questions in the chat yeah, about Jewish yeah. art, uh, Jewish uh, art now on contemporary yeah. Jewish art. I, I actually, I'm, I will use that actually as an opportunity now to once yeah. again plug our um, the organization that is so gratefully uh, hosting this, Lava Berlin, which um, which has a mission to to do very much um, exactly what all these women are describing to create this 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 home for for Jewish art that extends beyond religion, beyond, it's all aspects of Jewish life, all aspects of cultural Jewish life. Um, it's certainly not the only place where Jewish art is existing, but it's um, a very, an amazing brand new uh, development that um, that we would love for anyone to look into longer. And like I said, our applications open next week. If you would like I wanna to say, that's cool. I wanna say a couple of things about that too. I mean, one of the people who's here um, listening in is Deborah Phillips, who's also an oh, artist. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, and she's she's an example of somebody who's also for decades been incorporating Jewish uh, ideas, images, symbols um, in in her art. It's it's one of her main inspirations, and so it's going on privately with individuals doing their art, and it's also going on publicly. And I think that what the situation was before before I came to Berlin, where as Anna was describing it, it was much more um, people were hidden. They needed to come out <laughs> as as Jewish artists. Um, that has changed a bit, and I'm not going to say that it's all out in the open now. But you, we do have now this very public Berlin Jewish Museum, which also sometimes features the work of, of Jewish artists in Germany. Um, there are more forums for, for that. And, and unfortunately, not all the great artists doing work with Jewish inspiration are included or are, are not given a forum, but some are. So I just wanted to say that, that well, the scene has changed a little bit in that way. 
Plus, there's another aspect, which may be a little bit more of a downer, which is that there was a fascination with Jewish art and music, um, more so in the 90s and the early 2000s. And that kind of fascination, I think, is a little bit abated. I don't know if you guys think him. so. Huh? But, you're you're happy about that yeah Baruch Hashem we are just part of the society and that's a blessing so we are no exotic birds anymore where you go to oh you are Jewish how interesting so oh yeah you are Jewish fine and you are Catholic wonderful let's have a cup of coffee so uh, you see I'm 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 happy about this development yeah I also, there was something else that you said, you had said earlier, Anna, which is about um, Jewish uh, art and expression being colorful and out there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say right away that your happy hippie Jew bus, is, <laughs> for those of you in the audience who have never heard of this, um, is definitely something celebrating Jewish um, diversity and in a very, very colorful way, and it's bringing it out to the public. It's like a traveling bus, which tells the story from a certain angle of, or from several angles of, of what Jewish life and culture can be. And it's meant to also disarm people. I mean, which is something that Anna has been doing all, as long as I've known her as an artist, um, trying to get people to lose there's this wonderful German word, which doesn't have a good translation in English, Berührungsangst. 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 Yeah, how do you fear that? of contact. Like, what's going to happen to me if I say the wrong thing in, to a Jewish person? And to, like, disarm people and get them to, to relax and ask their questions is one of the things that you do with, with your art. So, anyway. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Happy hippie Jubas. You put it in there. <laughs> Hot tip and holy. <laughs> Thank you all. Well, if, if we don't have any more questions, um, I think we can go ahead and call it to a close. Thank you all so much for your time, for your wisdom, for your stories, and for your humor, all of it. It was uh, truly an honor to listen to all of you. Um, there are a lot of links in the chat, so please go ahead and save them. And then if you would like to review any of this uh, to watch any of it again, if anything that you missed, uh, as we said, this will be on um, our Facebook page as well. Um, so I don't believe that there's anything else. So on that note, thank you all so much and enjoy the rest of your Sunday day or evening, depending on where in the world you are. Thank you. Thank, thank you for nice. inviting, thank you. inviting us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you.